the tower. All right, sounds pretty. Well, I guess it's a, a pretty neat tower. <laughs> Looks pretty modern. I was expecting something medieval. And this is where medieval. I have trouble saying anything meaningful about Coda's work. Because more than anything else, the tower just feels distant. It feels like it's trying to distance itself from the world. It's a very cold game. Yeah, there's an ambient sound of suffering as well. This room actually has a maze in it. Except that all the walls of the maze are invisible. And then every time you touch one of the walls, there's this awful flashing and noise. So the experience is really miserable. The game goes beyond not being meant to be played. It actually seems to despise the player for trying to play it at all. But I do want to show you the rest of the level. So when you're ready to continue, press enter and I'll put a bridge over the maze. Yeah, let's do that right now. So here's the bridge. It's, like, it's actually <laughs> quite nice in terms of being uh, scary, this environment. There's a light up there as well. And to be fair, it's not like this is the first game that's needed some modification to be playable. Like the house cleaning game. You know, that one used to actually loop the cleaning chores and you just cleaned a house forever. I had to cut it off so that you could exit the house and the game would actually end. But that game had an idea that it was actually trying to communicate. What's the deeper idea behind the invisible maze? The only way past this challenge is to randomly guess the six digit code. Like the invisible maze, it's frustrating to me because it's the opposite of everything else that Coda has made. It doesn't encourage thought or engagement. It doesn't ask anything of me except a lot of my time. If I could have reached him during this time, then maybe I could have asked him, but I couldn't. I still don't really understand why this is here. I'll put the code on the ground for you here though so that we can move on. So one, five. One. I wish you could turn it the other way, but we can't. Or at least I don't know how to, if we can. Ah, damn it, I just pressed it once too many times. That's the six. One is already there. Seven. And the lever. So we get some stairs over here. The switch to open this door is actually on the other side of the door, meaning that it's literally impossible to solve from this side. So even if you somehow brute forced your way through the first two challenges and you got to this point, there's actually just no way to progress. And it's scary for me, the idea of Koda cutting himself off entirely, just saying, you know, that's it, that's the end of the conversation, not giving me any way to fix the problem. I feel like a failure, I guess, when I can't fix the problem but I can open this door for you so let me do that was I a failure for not understanding this game I, mean, I don't know why I would be it's not like everything needs to have a solution but I feel it somehow I feel like I failed and I don't understand why I remember it's June of 2011 I'm playing this for the very first time, and as I'm playing, I'm thinking to myself, I don't know this person. I have no idea who this person is. It wasn't the guy I knew, it wasn't my friend. I had come to so many conclusions from looking at all of his work up to this point, and then suddenly none of them... I had been trying to, though. That was the thing. 
For years, I was trying to get to know him, to understand who he actually was and, and what he stood for. I asked him so many times to please just tell me what his games mean to him. I asked him please to tell me what the three dots mean. And he wouldn't. Well, that might not mean anything. I, I just felt so strongly that if I could have connected with him, that if I could have somehow made his work my own, that I would finally be once and for all happy. It was that I needed to see myself in someone else. I needed to be someone other than me. But he stopped and left. And it felt somehow like I had failed. screw up dear Davy thank you for your interest in my games I'm the reason that you stopped making games aren't I it's because of what I did I poisoned it for you I need to ask you not to speak to me anymore so I wonder if, <laughs> uh, if he actually exists and wrote that email to Davy. Sit through the door. I don't think I ever told you this, but when I took your work and I was showing it to people, it actually felt, <laughs> it felt as though I were responsible for something important and valuable. I wonder at times whether you think I am making these games for you. you and the people who played them, they treated me like I was important. They really listened and cared about what I had to say. Even though I was showing your work, it was... I felt good about myself. Finally. For a moment, while I had that, I liked myself. You so infected my personal space that it's possible I did begin to plan solutions in my work somewhere hidden between games. If there was an answer, a meaning, would it make you any happier? I don't know if he's talking about games really or just life in general, as in there is no meaning to life, even if you look for it. And it's not going to make you happier looking for it. Would you stop taking my games and showing them to people against my wishes? Giving them something that is not yours to give. Violating the one boundary that keeps me safe. Would you stop changing my games? Stop adding lampposts to them? That's uh, that's really odd. It seems like uh, like maybe he's having a conversation with himself. And then you stopped, and I didn't have anything left to show people. I I just had to be with myself, and as soon as that happened, there was no feeling at all. Nothing, less than nothing. What does that mean? Would you simply let them be what they are? When I am around you, I feel physically ill. You desperately need something and I cannot give it to you. I literally do not have it. Struggling to come up with new ideas is not making me depressed. Low points are just a part of the process. The fact that you think I am frustrated or broken says more about you than about me. I realize that this doesn't make sense to you just yet. Which is fine, you're not my problem to solve. But I do hope that one day it clicks and that you make peace with this thing you are wrestling.
I'm afraid that I did something really stupid because I don't like myself. And when you finally see what I am talking about, don't say anything. There's no uh, liver. That's why I'm releasing this collection of your work, is because I haven't been able to find any other way to reach you. I've tried everything. And so a part of me has hope that if I put this compilation out into the world, and if I put my name on it, that maybe enough people will play it so that it'll find its way to you, so that I can tell you that I'm sorry. I know I screwed up. If I apologize to you truly and deeply, will you start making games again? Please, I need to feel okay with myself again. And I always felt okay as long as I had your work to see myself in. I mean, is, is something wrong with me? Because I know that I did an awful thing, and I'm doing it again right now. Like, I'm, I'm showing people your work, but I can't stop myself from doing it. That's how badly I need to feel something again. Like, I'm an addict. There has to be something wrong with me. Can I apologize? What if I tell you I was wrong? Will that work? Will that fix it? I, I, I don't know. I don't think it will, but there's nothing else that I can do. Just tell me what you want. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please. Start making games again. Please help me. Please give me some of whatever it is that, that makes you complete. I want whatever that wholeness is that you just summoned out of nothing and you put into your work. You were complete in some way that I never was. And I want to know how to, how to, I want to know how to be a good person. I want to know how not to hate myself. Please. I'm fading. And all I want is to know that I'm going to be okay. Epilogue. So now we're at a train station, it looks like. With a lamppost in the middle. It's set this way. More, 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 more more love, more praise, more people telling me that I'm good. Always more, more, more. It's like a disease. Solution. Solution, solution. I guess if someone had told me ahead of time that he just really enjoyed making prison games, maybe I wouldn't have thought he was so desperate. I wouldn't have told so many people that he was depressed. Maybe he just likes making prisons. So I'm really wondering if this is actually an apology game to a real person or it's just him talking to himself. Even now, the disease is telling me to stop. Don't show people what a shitty person you are. They'll hate you. Maybe there's a part of him that didn't want to show his work to anyone. And a part of him that wanted the uh, acknowledgement of the world when they saw what he did with his work. Let's head towards the light over there. If I knew that my life depended on finding something to be driven by other than validation, 
what would that even be? <laughs> it's strange, but the thought of not being driven by external validation is unthinkable. Like, I actually cannot conceive of what that would be like. Well, that would be if instead of asking what you want out of life, you ask what life wants out of you. I suppose that would make a transition in the way of thinking. Maybe there's something life wants out of you, not the other way around. What now? I think I need to go. And I'm sorry, because I know that I said that I would be here and I, and I would walk you through this, but I'm starting to feel like I have a lot of work to do. I have a lot that I need to make up for. And so I'm just gonna... Okay. There's a lot of really nice environments in this uh, game, if, if you can call it a game. Seems to be more of a, a tour through his uh, inner life in that period of time, up until he made the Stanley Parable, I suppose. We'll just head through the gates for good measure. There's a lot of talent in these environments, that's for sure. So let's jump. So for a minute uh, I thought it looked like a pallet room, but it looks more like an elevator shaft, I guess. Let's just jump up here. So, what's that? It's back at the train station, maybe? Sort of sad music in the background there. Can hear own footsteps. I can't run at all, so I have to walk towards the uh, end of the light and the tunnel. Now there's thunder in the background, but the sky is clear blue. That's that beam again from the beginning, I guess. The one that will kill you to save everyone. So I wonder if it'll lift us out again to have a look at the universe. Yeah. It's a giant maze. I guess that's how he looks at life then. It's a giant maze of different choices. At the bottom of the universe. So I guess we're all running through that maybe. Each and every one. It's odd that there's a hole in the center of it. Maybe that's you, or in this case him. For A, whatever that means. Oh, 
All right, guys, that's the game. So <laughs> I guess you'll just have to interpret it for yourself. What do you think it means? Could be that he's talking to himself. It's all about Davy reading. Or maybe uh, there is somebody named Coda and he actually is trying to reach him through this. That's up to you what you think. Alright guys, that's the game. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you all next time.